This is the David Angie Podcast, episode number six for December 12th, 2009. And with me here today is special guest Sean Evans. How are you today, Sean? Doing fine, Dave. Thanks. Good. I'm going to interview Sean in just a moment, but first I have a few quick announcements to make. I have a couple shows coming up with the pity dates in the next couple of weeks. We are scheduled to play at Kawa Espresso Bar on the 17th, and we're also supposed to be playing at the Dog and Duck Pub on the 18th. I believe we're opening for Ben, but I can't remember who. And so if you'd like to learn more about those shows, please visit my website at www.daw-music.com and sign up for the newsletter while you're at it so you can get updates on future shows. Also, we're supposed to be playing January 14th at the Tropicana with the pity dates. And that's pretty much it for announcements. So again, with me here today is Sean Evans, who is a composer as well as a accomplished drummer in my eyes and Sean has a good ear for orchestration and was also helping out as a produce, producer for Angels Breaking Silence. So let's talk a little bit about your experience as a drummer first. How did you get your start? Um, I was involved in high school. My, uh, my, my best friend at the time was a uh, trombone player like me and there was a spot opening up, and we were in a big fight. So what ended up happening was uh, he said he was going to go for the drum spot. I said, I'm going to go for the drum spot. I don't like you. I'm going to go for the drum spot. So totally uh, not an admirable way to find a, a new position drumming, but uh, that's how it ended up. Started drumming there, uh, went through high school, and uh, went from high school to college, went to Capilano College in, in, in North Vancouver, and was playing in the jazz department there for a while. And mm. then I went off to ships for about one year and then I started liking it. So I went back for another four. So that's basically where I'm at right now. I'm at, uh, at in university here in, 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 uh, in Calgary in the music department of Ambrose university college and, and, uh, finishing my graduating year. So you've already had a few years of education behind you with, with music. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the bands you've played in. You've played on in a cruise ship for a while. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, there was a, a bunch of different bands in that. I played in uh, in uh, trios and quartets and quintets and, and everything up to an 11-piece big band on the Queen Mary 2. So uh, everything that way involves a lot of reading. So there was a lot of understanding in how click tracks work because there's a lot of production shows and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, a lot of necessary understanding that... that, that uh, uh, time is so integral to the overall sound of, of an ensemble. So it became necessary to start working on time that way. And um, so trios, quartets, quintets, everything up to 11 piece. And out off of cruise ships, there were um, all, all types of different bands. I was in a country band and a, a, um, an R&B band for a while. And, and uh, there's been a, a a smattering of other stuff that was not so long term as those ones. So, what does it look like to play all those different styles as a drummer? Um, it just comes down to being able to understand the the style. So, if you, obviously, if you're listening to the music, if you're familiar with it, you're able to um, not just uh, take in, but also, um, you know, obviously, the more you you the more you inhale, the more you exhale, so to speak. It's a it's a matter of understanding the style. So. If you understand the style, you can understand why a certain um, a certain rhythm is is played in the weak part of the measure rather than the strong part of the measure. Um, if you understand the language of the the dialect of music, then obviously uh, it will become less and less of a of a a chore to listen to it and more natural. Hmm. Talk about some more of the requirements and nice to haves when playing on a cruise ship. Um, hmm. Well, I think the the biggest thing is is being able to adapt. I think uh, if you have a, a skill for adaptation, then you're going to be better off overall because um, you never really know what what you will be a part of, whether it's uh, um, 
if you're playing in a show band versus playing in a, uh, a trio, I mean, those are two entirely different things. With the show band, because everything is very uh, defined, it's it becomes necessary to have a, a very strong uh, reading ability. If you've got that, great. If you don't, um, fake it as best you can because right. you'll get better overall uh, the more you do it. And when you're bringing in new acts every week, uh, you never know what the mu music's going to look like, whether it's a detailed drum part or whether it's, you know, just a rhythm part that has, um, you know, a part for the rhythm section on it. So, hmm. yeah, that's I think that's the biggest thing. If you had to pick just one style or genre of playing, what would you say is your primary? Gospel R&B. Gospel R&B. Gospel R&B. Definitely. Definitely. It's the funnest, the funnest one to play. Very energetic. It's very uh, um, articulate in its, um, in its parts. Um, if you listen to the best stuff, it's more like a, a very large, um, a large band that is speaking um, in counterpoint to each other. There's not, uh, there's, there's, the best stuff has very tight organization and the best stuff has, it's like, uh, you know, if you listen to really good funk, there's, a, there's something mm. about it that just makes you want to go, oh man, yeah, that's, that's it. Definitely. That's it right there. Is, have you had the chance to play a lot of gospel R&B then? No, <laughs> no, no. It's it's uh it's a very uh, it's very foreign to Western Canada. It's very popular in places like uh, Atlanta and Houston, but um, because it's it's so far removed from from the uh, multicultural um, sort of white bread thing that we've got going here in Western Canada. There tends to be uh, <laughs> a, a movement towards, you know, rock and country and not yeah. much of anything else. So with, you know, you got, you got some blues going on, but basically that's what you've got. Cause it, it reflects the culture. Meanwhile, in Houston, you've got where my, where my lovely wife is from. Um, she is, uh, because of my time down there spent with, uh, spent courting her and, and her family and all that it's given me a lot of great opportunities to hear what the local scene is like for for you know for what um uh an uh a section of the country that has so many different cultures going on at the same time like it is so rich down there so it it's it's really great to have uh um, all those musics coming together and, and exalting God in, in, in a way that is sort of musically very, very diverse. Hmm. Yeah, here, here in Alberta, we definitely seem to have a bit of a country focus in my experience playing around uh, Calgary and area. Yeah. Do you play any other instruments? Uh, no, no, I don't. I, I, I have an understanding of, of harmony, but... Uh, my piano playing is is very weak. I can you know I can plunk out a series of chords for you, but uh, technically no, no nothing, mm. nothing, nothing more than you know drums is obviously going to be my strongest point. Yeah, interesting. So let's talk a little bit about the composer side of things. What are some of your goals as a composer, and where do you want to take that? I listen to a great deal of film scores and I have I have a lot of trouble listening or watching movies without being very distracted by a good film score. Uh I can't sometimes there's a there's there's times in movies like like in in for example Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Um there's this there's there's a song by um by Hans Zimmer called uh Drink Up Me Hardy's Yo Ho and it is Oh, it is so powerful. It's stuff like that that is that really makes me want to compose more. It's like there's something about the beauty of it and the the way it takes you along in the in the size and scale of it that it it's a very beautiful thing. And I don't think there's anything else that can um move some people like music can. I I think it's a marvelous opportunity to to bring um to bring to bring a pointer to 
to the glory of Christ that way, because that's certainly my direction. Music ministry is 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 my uh, my direction in music. Right. Um, is is the drumming thing going to continue to be an integral part of what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think that as others have said, as it's certainly not the first time, uh, if, if you have a drummer, it's because the drumming was in the drummer before the, the drumming took on. It's Hmm. a, it's an intuitive sort of a, a, a natural thing. Um, a drummer will always find drums, but it's very rare that drums will, will sort of grow from a person. It's either, it's either there intuitively or it can be there in different stages, obviously, but, um, or in in different degrees, I should say. But, um, the best drummers are, are drummers through and through, whether they have drums or whether they have, um, you know, no drums. It, 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 it comes down to a, um, a musicianship thing. It's like, you know, there's a guy in Vancouver, Brad Turner, and he's a, he's a fantastic trumpet player and and then you go listen to him on piano and he sounds equally fantastic and you go well why, how is that even possible but it's because mm. musicianship is not something that that just you know you 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 do grow it but it is something that is you are a musician you're not specifically one one instrument yeah and i've also heard in large part it doesn't necessarily have to do with skill so much as your personality and how how much people like to work with you Mm-hmm. in the industry. Yeah, I think that's that certainly has, has weight to it. Hmm. Uh, talk about some of the things that you pay attention to when, when you're composing music. Hmm. Um, I have a... I have a uh, an idea as well. I send myself an email every time I, 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 I hear a really great idea in music that I want to sort of take and run with. Uh, and it's just, it's pages and pages and pages long, whether it's a, a, a lyrical point or a melodic point or a harmonic point, there's always something that can catch your attention in music and being able to concentrate those, um, things and describe them is, is very important, uh, to, to me, um, because I don't know how you'd have good composition apart from it being good for people to listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that usually comes from, from the hook concept and, uh, there's, there's all, all types of different hooks and whether or not it's recognized or not, there's always things that can be done to analyze and figure out what is it about that four seconds of music that makes me so happy or makes me Hmm. so on fire about something or just, you know, whatever the, whatever it draws out of you at that, at that particular position of the song, you can always analyze it every, every time. And if it's not, then, then there's, there's something that you can take from it, whether it's an intangible, um, or not, and, and apply it in some way to your own, uh, stuff. And that's basically my, my composition has, has come from that, um, standpoint. That's good. What sort of music inspires you besides some of the things that we already talked about? Um, well, good music is good music, regardless of the style. I mm. like um, I like bluegrass a lot. Mm. I think that Alison Krauss has one of the sweetest voices I've ever heard, and uh, and the um, there's a lot of really good music everywhere it just comes to like you know if you listen to just vocals but bobby mcferrin for example i mean he's a master and there's he's he's got such a lock on nuance um and that's what it really comes down to if you if you can latch on to what who is who is being able to sort of give off nuance in their music they they emote very easily they uh, they have a, a a response with their audience very very quickly and that typically comes from this sort of nuance concept Louis Armstrong had it you know you can talk about who um, you know what was done in the in the in the in the late 70s early 80s with you know some of the stuff from earth wind and fire it's like it's all the same nuance is is nuance and so it's what attracts us to music so that that's probably one of the one of the biggest things that's that's more universal i think Hmm. 
Let's talk about jazz for a bit earlier. You mentioned that you had some education in jazz. Yeah. So yeah. what are some of the things, what are some of the big takeaways from <laughs> from playing jazz? <laughs> that it doesn't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, I think the the biggest takeaway from, from, from jazz, for the biggest takeaways was that um, there is a... Uh, a lot of people who are very fervent and just love jazz and there's mm. um and they're a very small pocket um those people who will go out and 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 pay for jazz is is an entirely different thing like there's a lot of people who say hey, yeah i love jazz and then they you know if you ask them to go to go down to the beatnik here in calgary they say well i you know i i don't think 10 bucks is worth it for you know cover right so Ah, the phone's ringing. <laughs> I think the beatnik is probably calling me up saying, yeah, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> some, some, some people from the Jazz Association of Western Canada calling me up wondering what's going on. Um, other takeaways, um, I think the, the biggest thing was that it set something. It set up. Um, I heard something in jazz that really I, I, I really loved and that I moved towards that and that jazz wasn't for me the final ending to the chapter like i thought it yeah. was going to be it only set me up this this sort of this musical trajectory that now put me um into being able to describe um what and why i liked certain styles of music um i think jazz is is very good at um if you if you study jazz it's a very good um, way of being able to harmonically categorize things, shall we say, um, being able to take music apart, um, not as much as classical for, uh, for that matter, but, mm. uh, jazz is very good at understanding harmony because obviously the, 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 um, the vertical structure of, of jazz is very wide. Um, the, there's a lot of rich chord usage and a lot of different textures that can be applied so um i mean there's there's a lot of people who have who have taken that and 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 you know they've they've gone in an, in an entirely different direction with it like like uh there's a there's an outcropping of this going on in the in the in the 60s and the and the 70s there were a lot of you know jazz musicians who went off and did different things like uh um um, the alto saxophonist, uh, was it Phil Woods? I, I think it might've been Phil Woods that played, uh, that the alto sax solo on, um, I love you just the way you are by, uh, by Billy Joel. I, it might've been Phil Woods. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, that's one example. I mean, he's a fantastic jazz musician, but there's a lot of different things. You can, like, you know, Branford Marsalis playing with Sting, you know, it's the same thing. It, hmm. it, it's all sort of, um, a developing of how you are able to see music is the biggest takeaway, I think, for me. Hmm. There does seem to be a pretty big jazz scene in Calgary, um, but the immense amount of study and practice and everything that goes into it, mm -hmm. when you're not getting paid to do it, mm -hmm. it's easy to, to get disheartened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the more reason you, you have to make sure that you love it because if yeah. you don't you're gonna get your heart broke <laughs> no it, it if you if you love anything you're gonna eventually um you you can find a way to bring the two together uh your your need for income and 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 money um you know this coming from a person who's 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 still in you know university <laughs> <laughs> so so it just comes down to being able to uh, focus in the specific of what you are are willing to do and finding out what you are, what people are, are willing to pay you for, I guess. And that seems to be the story of the music industry currently. If you don't love doing it, then you may have no business doing it. Yeah, that's certainly true. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's getting harder and harder for bands to make money via CD sales. And that's a topic we're going to get into in here just a little bit later, some hot topics that we always like to talk about here on the David Andrew podcast. But 
First, we're um, just going to take a quick break and let you know how you can get in touch with us. Here at Red Flame Studios, we welcome feedback on all of our projects. If you would like to chime in with your thoughts on this podcast, uh, please email us at david at daw-music.com. You can also leave a comment in the show notes, which can be found at www.daw-music.com as well as www.dawinterviews.com. Please indicate if you do not want your email or comments read on future episodes of the podcast. I should also note that uh, www.dawinterviews.com will only be updated when I'm actually interviewing someone, so in the case of podcasts where I'm not interviewing anybody, that site is not updated. All right, so let's get to round two of the questions. Um... And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to get into some hot topics. Uh, so how important is it to network as a musician, in your opinion? Mm. Networking is is very important. Um, it's, uh, I guess that depends in, in how, what sort of a, a marketing mindset you have. Um, if you hate it, you're probably not going to enjoy it. But it's something that if you're going to, if you're going to make a viable business out of it it must be done obviously people have to know about you if you're going to be able to bring a product or service forward that is valuable to the community so obviously it's going to be pretty important that marketing is is a a a part of that what are some effective ways of marketing that's a good question (laughs) um one of the for me one of the best ways to market myself is that i don't like to um i don't like to exalt myself uh music ministry is is something that is fraught with self aggrandizement and as a um as a uh as 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 somebody who wants to use music as a tool to to lift god up um, I don't, I don't want to be a part of, I don't, I don't want to be, um, exalted. I want God to be exalted. And I've, I've always found that in the middle of that, he will, he will, um, bring you what you need out of, out of provision. Mm-hmm. Um, the more sort of he's lifted up and we are, we are, we are, we are decreased, um, there's there's great confidence that can that can come from that um in the experience that i've had certainly of of how how god has provided for me in the middle of those things so i think when it comes to things like like um like uh getting your name out there um i don't have i don't have a a whole lot of things to say about it because uh i haven't (laughs) i haven't put my name out there (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, so, social media and social online social networking is is a pretty big hot topic right now, and with most po- podcasts I've found, and uh, there are a lot of people who only use it to talk about what they're doing, mm. and I think I mean, in Twitter maybe in some ways has encouraged that. At the same time, when used effectively, there are people that are finding success. Mm. So, let's talk about you know, maybe some of the social media that you think about getting into at some point or no? Um, I use Facebook. I think it's, I think it's a great tool for, Mm -hmm. you know, um, even finding friends from high school that you haven't seen in a long time. And and even if it is, uh, sort of, uh, you know, even if your fan, even if your friends friendship base is, you know, sort of an inch, inch, inch deep and a mile wide, so to speak, it's still sort of cool that, oh yeah, I can connect with them if I, if I, you know, if I need to. And it's an interesting way to, uh, um, micro blog, uh, with the, you know, the status reports and stuff like that. I, I, I I like, you know, I like finding out what people are doing. Not so much as like, I'm in the car wash right now. Like that's, that's not interesting. (laughs) Make it worthwhile people. If there's one thing on Facebook that you do, make it worthwhile. I am making my dog, uh, his breakfast. Like that doesn't matter. (laughs) That's fine. But you know, 
it, it, there comes a point where it's like obviously you just want to be heard and it mm, if 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 it's something worthwhile that's that's great that's great um facebook is is something that i use and so i to go back to the point uh it is something that i would use because it's something that i use yeah um things like twitter i don't know too much about um i'm sure that it has some uses for some people who are just like oh i really need to know what that band is doing right now at this moment yeah, i'm sure it's very effective and um uh i i don't know that i'll ever use it but you know i may have my mind changed depending on what what sort of directions it can go right yeah i mean twitter twitter's basically just a you can update it's it's micro blogging just like facebook really you mm-hmm. can update your status let people know what you're doing or uh, advertise your latest cd or latest blog post mm-hmm. um the the unfortunate tendency is is that people jump online and then they'll say our new album is out by now which is maybe useful for some people but uh the, the unfortunate tendency with that is is it's a lot of like would you walk up to somebody mm. you know and then say my new album is out by now <laughs> that's a really good it's not personally directed yeah, yeah. unfortunately that's, that's a very good point yeah it, it it you have to think in terms of conversation absolutely like yeah, exactly. how do you do you converse with somebody by going up and 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 sort of telling them you know n- with no desire for two way conversation like well then why would you put it on one way you know like i like those exactly. i like those blog posts like like um oh sometimes tim tamashiro uh has this thing on his he's a facebook friend of mine and sometimes he'll ask a, a really quirky question and there's you know there's always a, a good 25 responses you know in in the first in the first 15 minutes so he's he, it's a it's an interesting way to sort of start conversations and about about you know different discussion points I like that. I like that perspective, certainly. Yeah, me too. So how can a musician balance their practice time, promotion efforts, and daily responsibilities? Mm -hmm. Um, Integrity is very important, always. Uh, Mm -hmm. Your your, um, personal relationship with people are are obviously they're very important so if people think that you're trustworthy they will go with you over somebody who is less so with the same skill level right um so in that way um private practice is obviously something that's very important yeah but uh i've known a lot of people working on cruise ships is a great opportunity to see we call them um we call them uh now that I've forgotten the name of them, <laughs> you can tell those people who have been in the practice room for eight hours a day and then, then go out and, and play a, a set at night uh, because they've got no ear. They've got zero ear. They've got mm. no interaction. They're exclusively, um, uh, their exclusive intention is to say, check me out. Don't you see how good I am? Right. And they, they, just, they don't get hired because um, it's not about, one it's about collective creativity um in organization for the sake of um bringing a general sense of enjoyment to a larger even even larger concentric circle of people shall we say so one person can't do that Uh, there's a lot of people who you know who might say otherwise but i don't enjoy playing or listening to people who are exceedingly self-centered like that Mm -hmm. um and we all are self-centered to a certain degree i guess but to sort of to be playing in to to be playing in different groups more is better um than playing all by yourself with no you know group playing um as far as your business side i mean that's we need to live. <laughs> it's it's obviously a very important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing where that line is, I guess, develops from from person to person. Uh, for me, because my uh, because God uh, is first priority uh, every time. Uh, he gets he gets first thing in the morning. Uh, 
Yeah. My wife is second priority in my life. Uh, uh, and developing the relationship with her, developing our marriage more is, uh, is, is something that is, has, has got to be a second place all the time. And then the third, um, school right now, but fourth, um, having the private practice is important, but because I'm not playing as much, it becomes less important. So I have opportunities to do more composition and things like that. Mm. Um, obviously you have to judge, you know, wherever your maxim maximization point is. If you're, if you have a big gig coming up, you know, practice, yeah. Get together with your band and, and put it together so that you sound sharp when you get, yeah. when you get up there. But if you're not going to be playing for a while, um, then, you know, try something different so that you can put your focus in a, in another way. Hmm. I, I've heard a few studies which indicate that some of the most successful people in the world, what they had in common was a good relationship with their spouse hmm. above all other things. Really? Yeah. That's really interesting. Well, that's very, very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's what the Bible says, so that's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I guess there is another study which indicates that the only thing the most successful people had in common, it wasn't race or age or anything physical. It was just the fact that they read lots of books. Hmm. Yeah, knowledge is, is very important. Um, yeah, that's, it's interesting. Yeah. I guess that's why there's so many podcasts because there's so much good knowledge to be shared about you know, modern trends and, and the direction things are going and, 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 and why we do what we do. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's really good. Um, you know, the internet has made the world a little smaller and now we can go and listen to a podcast or read a blog post and, and learn lots. Yeah. So Google has certainly made a lot of information available at our fingertips. Oh yeah. Um, so there have been a lot of changes in the music industry over the last few years. What is your take on that and what's happening right now? Let, well, let's take a step back even. Let's go into the history books. If we, if we consider what has happened has not happened before. What has happened now recently is not something that's, that's totally new. Right. As much as the, the, the technology innovations have been something new, this is still, um, it's more, it's, it, so to speak, it's more of the same. I mean, everything is, is, is as it was before. There's nothing new. Um, people are always trying to uh, uh, develop new ways of doing things and, and, and new um, musical uh, innovations are always going to be present, which is, which is great. That's very exciting. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited to know what's going to ha- what's what you know what the musical landscape is going to look like in 15 years i mean that's very exciting mm-hmm. um but at the same time there's been a certain amount of um musical inbreeding shall we say there's a lot of uh um i'm i should say i'm very grateful for the music that exists elsewhere not here because Hmm. the more you listen to the more you have uh uh where you are the more you sound like everybody else right um the the advantage of having uh you know so many so many musical styles and types and um bands on the internet is that there's a lot of opportunity to hear some really good stuff but at the same time there's so much filler Mm. There's so much of that sort of um, the reason that 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 they're not being picked up by studios is because they're they just don't have the they don't have musical they don't have they don't have something for whatever that's that makes it good to listen to so um, the direction that music is taking now it's just more of the same there's more power there's 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 a certain shift going on that's for sure but good music will always be good music and it will always have its place. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why we can be more grateful for the internet and, and, um, um, and the, the, the sort of the, the long tail, so to speak. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that, the concept, the, the idea that, uh, 
because it's not a physical product in in uh, in stores as CDs anymore. There's more room it, because it's you know obviously it, it, it's a digital file doesn't take any physical room uh, except on a server. So it just comes out to there's so much more music available that what you, what would have pushed off the end of the bell curve for sort of um, um, music that was less important has now sort of created this huge market of, of, of genre based music that anybody can find. Uh, and it's a fantastic innovation. Um, you know, you can, you can find, uh, uh, bands on the internet that, that, that would normally not have any exposure at all, but now you can find all of those, all of those bands that you would really enjoy the music of that normally you'd never be able to hear before this, yeah. this point in time. Definitely. There's, there's an interesting fact, which is that, uh, although, it, you know, in the news it's, they're saying the CD sales are down. In fact, independent CD sales are actually up. I believe that, yeah. 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 So it's a really interesting trend that's happening. And another thing I heard was was that uh, a similar thing happened when music was first transcribed. I don't know how early that would be, 16th, 17th, 18th century, somewhere in there. And now that uh, the transcriptions of the music became readily available, a lot of the composers or musicians of the time thought that would devalue their performance of it. If anybody could play it in their homes, why would they need to come and see them? <laughs> that's yeah, that's and that's true. a similar thing that's happening now. But just because everyone can can download it or hear it anywhere doesn't necessarily mean that it devalues the music. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good music. It, it will always be something that's that's people will enjoy hearing. I mean, that's why the that's why music continues to be so prolific in our in our in in the world it's it just comes down to a matter of if it's enjoyable it will be good i mean people thought the same thing about the cassette tape exactly you know, it, it it's it's no different nothing nothing ever changes it's just sort of a new group of thinkers saying well we got to protect what what what's ours here and you know sometimes that's a positive thing but you know not always in my in my eyes, nothing that I have is my own. It's all a gift from God that has been granted to me for the sake of of offering something beautiful uh, as a that his own beauty is seen in the tool of music that I use. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that's mine. It's not something that I make. He's given me the ability to create music, and I'm very grateful for that, but I certainly don't hold it as my own right. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just grateful to have a part in the process. It's it's interesting that certain organizations are trying to backpedal, go back to the old model, copyright, you know, try to enforce stronger copyright laws. And then there are some camps that are trying to take advantage of the fact that people are downloading lots of music and making their album available for free. So we still yeah. stuck in interesting times. Yeah, for I think that the model's always so there's there's a group of thinkers that are the, the model that stands is the model that goes, and the people who I guess the the innovative thinkers are always going to be challenging that, and that's a good thing because you yeah. know there's there's always innovations in different directions the concept of free for example i mean i i read the first few pages just in this in this bookstore about this this book called free is by the same guy who wrote the long tail and it's just i actually know it might be a different author but any any in any case uh this this idea of giving away something is 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 yeah. very powerful very powerful because uh, you, if you get if you get people who like your stuff attached to your stuff, they will eventually pay for it. It's a, it's a, it's a surefire way. Yeah, that's good. Do you have any advice for people that are trying to get established in the music industry? Mm. Um, I think that your focus must always be very, very sharp. Um, pick your direction and go there um, using the elements of of um, you know using what you have available to you is very important whether it's you know 
you live in a community of, of whatever, 50 people with, with one little coffee shop in town, mm-hmm. or, or you live in uh, Los Angeles, uh, or you know whatever t- if you're in Toronto or Vancouver it doesn't matter um, use your use the resources that you have available to them um, and I I think being an artist is 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 I mean I think Stravinsky put it best an artist is first and foremost uh, an observer and not just in musical ways but in, in also business ways um, mm-hmm. being able to see something that maybe a lot of people aren't able to see yeah. Um, and using that to an advantage is, is, is certainly going to be, um, it's always key in, in, um, in, in, in innovation, I guess. That's good. Uh, earlier we were talking about before the podcast started, um, some of the different resources that you're tuning into. So let's talk a little bit about that. As far as podcasts yeah, go, podcasts or, yeah. or blogs, or there's two that I like, uh, especially one's one's called Music Career Juice. It's uh, Peter Spellman. He's uh, he's at uh, he's at Berkeley. He's he's career career direction guy at at, at Berkeley Music, and uh, he's got an exceptional uh, um, resource for um, researching things. I don't know how he does it, but he's just he's just very good at researching things and and and, and resourcing things. Um, the other guy is, what's his name? I don't remember his name, but he does one called music is your business. Uh, Chris, um, Chris, Chris something. Shoot. I forget what his name is. He's out of Seattle. Um, I've really enjoyed the things that they have to say on their, on their podcasts. Um, music career juice and, and, uh, um, um, music is your business. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of good stuff that is um, non-musically related that you can find in a business sense. Um, for me, leadership is very important. I like I like uh, I like authors like uh, uh, John Maxwell. I think Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of of Leadership is an exceptional book in um, hmm. uh, guiding uh, guiding principles in organization. And, um, there's a lot of good things out there, but, but, uh, I mean, ultimately for me, it, it always comes back to if I have, if I have a, some time to invest in a resource, uh, it's always going to be the Bible for me hmm. because, um, we have, we have no, I mean, what do we know as people? I mean, people don't people come up with things and people create new things, but it's not in their own strength that they do that. They do that by, by, uh, by the, by the ability to create that God has given them. So my, you know, being that my final end in music is to, is to point to God's glory, um, and exalt, exalt Christ's name. I think the ultimate thing is that we don't know much and and one of the best ways to 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 know what is good what is wise is to invest some time in god's word so that we do yeah i know the days when i feel really connected to god i just feel like uh i don't know if i could call it divine wisdom but uh certainly discernment in 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 how to reply to people's text messages or emails or whatever seems to come more naturally when i when I am connected with God. So yeah, the Bible has such good things to say about even finances and your business and whatever topic you're looking for. Really? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff in Proverbs about it and, and, uh, um, you know, general principles of, 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 um, you know, all the, the society that we, we live in was developed from that Judeo Christian, uh, uh, beginning that all of our laws in their infancy and all of our our um, our conceptions of of freedom they all stem from the biblical model. So I mean, going that's back right. to that source that's is right. is is, a, is, a, is I mean, it's a great thing. And that's what I wanted to hit on. So there you go. <laughs> Stole your thunder. <laughs> no, that's really good. 
Uh, any closing remarks? I think we're we're pretty close to wrapping up here. So, um, let's see. Do what you love and uh, uh, do what honors God above all things. Even if you don't love it, do what honors God, and eventually He'll give you the love so that you're able to endure. Hmm. Very good. Okay, thanks a lot for being a part of the podcast, Sean. It's a pleasure being here, It's Dave. great to have you. You've been listening to the David Andrew Weeb Podcast, broadcasting from Calgary, Alberta, Canada.